that bill into law. All right, now, right now we want to shift gears into matters uh, that are touching on wild animal pro uh, protection. Now, if you well know, consumers are actually willing to pay more for meat that is antibiotic-free, chemical-free, and from higher welfare production system. Now, this obviously highlights um, the concerns by consumers all round, even meat consumers, centered on how the animal is ha handled, and that directly translates to food safety. Now, the World Animal Protection has actually released a report just today touching on some of these uh, issues that are centered on um, how animals are actually, um, how animals directly translate to what we eat and the quality of food on our table. Now joining me in studio to try and break down this particular report that was released um, by the World Animal Protection is Dr. Victor Yamo, who is the campaign manager of animals in farming at the World Animal Protection. Thank you so much for making time and welcome to our our studios right here. Thank you, Jesse. All right, now, uh, uh, we definitely want to know more about the report and the recommendations or conclusions that have been drawn. But as we do that, we know that the population, especially meat consumers, are cognizant of the link between the meat we consume uh, for the meat eaters and, pure and poor human health. Now, according to the findings of the report, what are some of the concerns that were raised? Uh, thank you, Jesse, for that question. Uh, the report we raised earlier today was actually uh, consumer attitudes around meat mm -hmm. and meat consumption. Yes. And basically, we were looking at their knowledge, attitudes, and uh, practices, a cap survey of some sort, to determine exactly what's happening in the market. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing uh, is that after interviewing about 1,344 people across four East African countries, Kenya, yep. Uganda, Tanzania, and Zambia, what came out clearly is that uh, uh, the consumers are beginning to connect uh, the welfare of the animal on the farm, how it's transported, and finally what ends on their table. And so consumers are beginning to ask for one, that we must ensure that the meat that comes onto their table is holistic, which is to say it doesn't have any uh, antibiotics, it doesn't have any chemicals that are detrimental to the consumer's health. The second thing the consumer is also saying is that they're willing to pay slightly more for meat that has been raised in a higher welfare production system. And our health, welfare production system, to just cut it down for the, uh, the viewers, is a system that caters for the needs of the animals, mm -hmm. uh, that ensures that the welfare of the animal is uh, catered for around the five fundamental freedoms that we talk about. Uh, freedom ensuring that the animal has food and water, ensuring the animal has enough space, ensuring the animal is free from any disease, ensuring it has capacity to express its natural uh, uh, tendencies, and ensuring that it's free from fear and stress. Mm -hmm. Because in a nutshell, what we're trying to say as wild animal protection is that uh, a happy animal produces better quality products and yes. also produces higher, uh, more product, uh, has a better productivity. Better productivity. Yeah. Now the correlation between the handling of the animal yeah. and the quality of meat as the end product yeah. is well highlighted. But let's talk about the quality assurance when it comes to the meat that we eat as consumers. You know, meat products and food safety yeah. assurance yeah. in terms of the makers, yes. Essentially what happens in countries like the four we've talked about and predominantly also in Kenya is the fact that we have a system that uh, evaluates the quality of the product and in a holistic way. In, 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 and what, to say, what I would like to say is that if you look at some of our producers, you hear about something called from farm to fork. Mm -hmm. Essentially from farm to fork is a quality standard that analyzes various aspects of the life of the animal from the farm through its transportation, through slaughter, and until it turns out your table through the retail outlet that you buy it from. Yes. And that is driven by certain international standards, certain uh, ISO standards, so to speak, uh, certain uh, critical uh, analysis of critical parts of the pathway that is ingrained into certain uh, uh, standards that are actually driven by Kenya Bureau of Standards. And that's why in most of the products that then go through the supermarkets or the fast food restaurants, you find the diamond mark of quality from Kenya Bureau of Standards. Sure. I think at certain levels, what has happened is that we as consumers are not aware of some of these standards and are not aware of uh, what we need to be asking our retailers where we, at the point at which we are buying our, prod, uh, our produce from. Because once we are clear about that, then we begin to ask the correct questions that then gives us the power to make buying decisions that then drive welfare, 
uh, food safety in our production system. Exactly. We all need to make informed decisions. Yeah. Now, even as we, you know, uh, talk about you know, the consumer is making an informed decision. We also have to appreciate the market power influence that, you know, this chain outlets, you've talked of supermarkets, perhaps yeah. I buy meat at a local butchery, you know. Now, of the chain outlets and supermarkets and perhaps the local butchery in terms of using their influence in the market to ensure that, you know, this public health crisis is averted, how exactly should we put them to the sport to ensure that you know the quality is safe because as a consumer i might not be able to ensure where the meat came from how exactly. it was transported you get me yeah yeah i get you i, I think one of the things we need to be start asking uh, as consumers is certain provisions and i think it's good that we are talking about uh, constitutional amendments the certain constitutional provisions that are very critical mm -hmm. and uh, when you look at our constitution it splits responsibility around animal welfare to, to the two levels of government. Uh, the national government is expected to ensure that protection of animal is catered for. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Schedule 4 that talks about uh, responsibilities of gov the national government and county government. Yes. While well, county government is supposed to look at things like uh, animal husbandry, extension, uh, disease control, health of the animals, and a, a multitude of other things. That is part of where we as Kenyans have failed because we are not holding our leaders accountable to ensure that certain structures and policies are in place. That's the first thing. The second thing is then, although this we say that uh, the, the, the supermarkets and the value chain has power, I think the consumer has power. And the power you have is when you are clear on what you want, then you can drive that change. And I want to give you a good example. Early this year, one of the big producers of milk, Brookside, yes. made a decision to change how they buy milk from buying milk in volumes to buying milk on quality standards, mm -hmm. which is looking at no antibiotics, no adulteration, water in this case in the product, and butter fat. Okay. The reason why they do that is because consumers have begun asking certain questions, especially in certain markets that they've been targeting. And I think as consumers, we need to start asking the same questions locally. What are our producers doing? Are they meeting certain international standards? The study we've done, which is part one of a study which has, was two-pronged. One was to talk to consumers. The other bit that we'll be re uh, uh, releasing later in the ma next month was to All talk right. to the value chain players and to ask them, what exactly do you require? If I'm going to, uh, if the, uh, a producer is going, uh, if a supermarket is going to ask uh, to buy from a supplier. Mm -hmm. Do they have standards that require the supplier to ensure that the supplier is adhering to certain food uh, safety standards? Yes. Do they have standards that are, uh, requires the, consumer, the, the producer to adhere to uh, or supplier to adhere to certain animal welfare standards? Because we have now realized from research and engagement with the consumers that there is a connection between uh, food safety mm -hmm. and uh, the quality of product that comes onto your space mm -hmm. with uh, the, the, how the animal is treated, both at transportation, in the farm, and ultimately how it is slaughtered. All right, very yeah. important facts right there. And it's definitely a conversation we'll continue having. Thank you so much for highlighting some of the issues exactly. that were raised through the report. As you've mentioned, it's the first part of the study you're right. doing. Yeah. So we'll definitely look forward to more interactions. Dr. Victor Yamo, right there, the campaign's manager, Amon Animals in 